from the planet Earth. We're here at VacTruth.com and it's uh, one of those times again where I'm going to cram information down your face that I've already done before but I'm going to continue to do so and in this case I'm going to keep doing it until everybody that I ever encounter stops vaccinating their children. 17 examples of admitted vaccine failure and I'm not going to read the entire blog because you know I don't need to do that, but I want to scroll through here and point out some statistics to you. Okay, first let's start with this before we get to the 17 examples. Number of vaccines before a child is six years old. Notice the United States, 36 injections into your child before they're even old enough to go to school. Yet we are still the most unhealthy nation in the planet. I'll add that. Don't have a link to that bit of information, but if you want to do a little research, you'll find that what I told you is true. Now, let's start here on this nice list, and I will link you to this. You need to have this. Vaccine failure number one, mumps outbreak in Orthodox Jewish communities in the United States. A large mumps outbreak occurred uh, among highly vaccinated U.S. Orthodox Jewish communities during 2009 and 2010. Of the teenagers vaccinated, 89% had previously received two doses of mumps-containing vaccine. 8% had only received one dose. Those infected with mumps who received a vaccine, 97%. Doesn't it seem a bit unusual that if the statement is true that vaccines work, then why would 97% of them get mumps? Seems pretty basic to me, folks. There's no mystery here. There's no rocket science. Let's move on before I get pissed off. Vaccine failure number two. I'm already pissed off, so this is uh, controlled rage right now. Vaccine failure number two. Mumps epidemic in Iowa, 2006 March 2006, a total of 219 mumps cases had been reported in Iowa, the largest epidemic of mumps in the United mumps rather in the United States since 1988. Of 219 cases reported in Iowa, the average age of infection was 21. Of the 133 patients investigated with a vaccine history, 65% uh, received two doses, 14% had received one dose, 6% had no dose. 14% vaccine status could not be documented. Those infected who received a vaccine, 79%. 79%. Okay. Number three, mumps outbreak at a summer camp in New York. Scroll through that. Vaccine coverage for the camp, 96%. 20 out of 31 people infected, 65%. Okay, let's move along. This is, evidently is all mumps information. Uh, mumps, and then we get into some measles. October 88 to uh, April 89, outbreak involving 269 cases of mumps occurred in Douglas County, Kansas. Of 269 cases, 208, or 77.3%, occurred among primary and secondary school students, of whom 203... 97.6% had received mumps vaccination. Four of them. How's that? Get injected four times. 97, almost 98% assured that you're going to get it. <laughs> and you keep injecting your children. Two fully vaccinated doctors get measles. Fully vaccinated. They get measles anyway. These are the doctors. Major measles epidemic in Quebec. 99% vaccine coverage. 99% of the people were vaccinated. And they got measles. Hmm. You cannot convince me that if they hadn't vaccinated anybody that they would have gotten 
percent, or 99 percent vaccine. What was it? Uh, at least 84 and a half percent. So 99 percent of the people get vaccinated, and 84 and a half percent of them get measles. Hmm. Leads me to believe that maybe somewhere around 15 percent of people would have gotten measles if we hadn't vaccinated anybody. That's just quick math. Maybe I'm off a bit. You do the math. You do the research. Okay, and I'm just going to, because I'm, I'm, I'm really getting irritated here. Uh, and this is just measles and mumps, folks. Okay? This applies to all of them. Let me give you, a, for instance, current day statistics, me and my three boys. Worst flu season Right? See, everybody, the m mainstream, lamestream media, CDC, everybody's warning. Worst flu season so far this year, right? Horrifying. Go get your vaccines. Well, we got the flu here about a week ago. You might remember a couple of videos back. I was sounding a little off. Uh, none of us were m sick more than three days and none of us were sick to the degree that we didn't function yes the kids did take a couple days one of them took two days one of them took three days off from school I didn't take time off from work for it none of us were vomiting or diarrhea we had some mild flu like systems we don't take vaccinations we don't take flu shots we do bump up on the vitamin D and we try to eat healthy but we've got a lot of work to do in that department too but we don't get vaccinated. We were sick three days. That's not very horrific to me. Not very horrific at all. Gives me no reason to inject my children. When I started waking up to this a few years ago, I insisted on the vaccination waiver, which most of you don't even know that you can obtain very easily. It is your right, and I'm going to encourage you to do that. Now, each state can be a little bit different. If you have trouble obtaining one, please feel free to reach out to me, and I will assure you that I will get all the information and if it, it means me calling your local government school doctor whatever to insist that they give you the waiver then uh, I will even go so far as to do that because this isn't about you or me it's about our kids okay but it's as simple as this normally you would start with the school nurse okay um, it, she should have a waiver form available now, in some cases, like I found in Kentucky, I had to go to the local health department. You need to do nothing more than make a clear statement that receiving vaccinations goes against your religious beliefs. Stop there. Don't embellish. You don't need to answer any questions. You don't need to label your religion. You don't need to nothing. That's all you have to say. Now, you're going to be met with opposition false information, attitudes, bullshit, doesn't matter. Now, if you're like me, and you don't have to do this, the law doesn't say you have to do this, all you have to do is make the clear statement that I just told you to make, and nothing more. And you don't have to have your kids injected for them to take school. Now, they're going to threaten you, if there's a pandemic, we, we won't allow your kids to come to school. Wait a minute, if all the other kids are vaccinated, why would there be a pandemic? What are you so worried about? But anyway, so your kids might get a week off from school. No big deal. Who gives a shit? Anyhow, you don't want them around all those filthy injected kids anyway, right? They get something they might not have gotten. So anyhow, I went with all kinds of printed information. And, and we had a conversation. And the lady at the health department uh, met me with an attitude and then insisted that I leave her office and would not answer any of the questions, such as, do, does she think it's okay to inject children with radiator fluid? And she wouldn't answer. And I asked her, how about embalming fluid? And she wouldn't answer. And I asked her, well, do you think it's okay to inject the DNA of other humans and or animals? And, and that's when she handed me the waiver and asked that I remove myself from her office which I did with a smile. I like to hold them accountable. I like to let them know that I'm informed. Now, I have met some school nurses that actually, um, I think, spent some time and thought on the information I gave them, and they were fully unaware. 
The lady at the health department was angry because she knows what type of lie she's endorsing. The guilt made her angry, and she removed me from that situation, and that was fine. But anyhow, if you have any problems at all, let me know. I'd be glad to help. Um, but you need to do this, folks. The link to this post will be below so you can read all this. Um, keep up to date. Natural News is another good source. Uh, anyway, stop injecting your kids. Okay, start eating healthy. Vitamin D, uh, bump it up. Get them a couple thousand milligrams a day uh, unless they're real young. And then cut that back to 400 or 1,000. But do the research first. But vitamin D, obviously vitamins are good. Um, and we're lacking in the vitamin D. Our sun is filtered. Um, our milk is manipulated. And it's illegal to drink milk that's good for you. So, you know, you make your choices. But stop injecting your kids. Much love. Many thanks. And I'll see you soon.